All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam Night School tonight. Tonight, have Greg Payton helping out with any questions or concerns that come up along for you guys tonight. So, um, and he'll even able, able he he will even be able to add any uh, technical advice also. <laughs> right, Greg. Good evening, guys. Absolutely. But um, although the your uh, knowledge gaps are uh, getting harder and harder to fill these days. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so, for those of you guys, I do see just a couple new names in here, so I'll do the, the good old ritual. Um, we are using GoToWebinar to do the night class here. Um, in the webinar, there is a chat section for you guys, and right now everybody's on mute just to eliminate any background noise. And um, if you guys do have questions, which I hopefully you guys do, put those in, those in the question panel, and Greg will type them in, or he'll tell me to pipe down and... Uh, We'll get those questions answered for you guys. So uh, tonight is probably gonna be a little bit short of a class. Um, kind of gonna go over the basics of kind of setting up a turning project and uh, just doing facing of turning. Um, got a lot of requests from you guys to kind of break down the turning and the mill turn. So that's what we are gonna do. So um, and then you know, with that being said, we definitely take your suggestions. And uh, so if you guys do have suggestions. Send those over to me in an email, and we'll get those added into the lineup for you guys. So I will uh, put my email address into the chat for everybody. Um, for everybody that is going to be watching this later on on YouTube, uh, my email address is down in the description of the video for you guys. And then <clears throat> for those of you guys that are new also, is every night class is recorded. So if you guys come over to the Solid Cam University channel, um, you guys can type in KevCam, or you guys can uh, just go to type in Solid Cam University. I will put the link in there for you guys also, for those of you guys that don't have it. Make sure you subscribe so you can, can see all the new videos coming up. But uh, a lot of great stuff in here, um, lots and lots of videos in here. Um, if you guys have a video that uh, you can't find in here, shoot me an email, and I'll find it for you, or we'll make one for you. So. Um, let us know what we can do to help you guys out for that training because uh, I want to kind of create this huge training uh, database for you guys to help you guys out uh, any way possible. So, all right, with that being said, we'll get into turning here. <clears throat> so, tonight, we're like I said, we're just going to kind of go over the, the basics of setting up a turning project, um, putting the coordinate system on there, different ways of doing stock, um, and then just a basic facing. Um, we're going to kind of, like I said, uh, really go through the uh, all the functions inside facing, so or facing and turning and drilling and all that stuff throughout the next couple of weeks here, and then we will get into mill turn. Um, one thing that we're not going to be covering is the MCOs, um, just because that's more post dependent than anything for you guys. So um, if you guys do want MCOs, let us know, and uh, we can add those in there for you guys. So all right, so we'll get the ball rolling here. Um, a lot of guys will start off a project in new turning. Um, if you guys, I, I, I would prefer you guys to start it off in mill turn. Now you guys may be saying, well, I don't have mill turn. Well, that doesn't matter. Um, here, here's why is because if you guys start off in a new turning project, you're only able to create one coordinate system in there. So if you have this part right here and you guys want to work on this front side here and then we want to flip that part over and do the back side, we'd have to create two separate projects. If you guys do it in mill turn, you guys can add as many coordinate systems as you would like. So definitely, even if you guys don't have a mill turn, if you guys just have the most simple basic uh, lathe on the market, always do a uh, new mill turn um, when you come in here. So it's just going to make your life a lot easier. Um, there's going to be some more options in there. Now we've kind of talked about this before with the, uh, the milling side of things, but um, you guys do have the option to do external or internal. Um, you know, what, what's the, the name of the project and where would you like to save it? Um, right now, I'm, I hit the little checkbox to do to save the part right next to the SOLIDWORKS file. Um, or you guys can have that in a separate directory. And then, of course, we have Intermetric. The green check mark here. Okay. So for your guys' coordinate systems, um, Get it rolling here. Um, 
try to stay away from, if I click on here, I did top center of model box. Try to stay away from that. Um, since we are working on the cylindrical part here, um, sometimes that coordinate system can just be shifted off one way or the other um, if things aren't um, drawn correctly in SOLIDWORKS. So the best way to go about putting your coordinate system on there is instead of doing top of center model box, do center of revolution face. Now with this, you guys can click on any round face and it will put the coordinate system aligned with that area. Um, if you see I had it back here, my coordinate system is actually pointing the wrong way, which is fine. Uh, what you guys can do is click the, the change to opposite button right here and get it facing the correct way for you guys. And then of course, like milling, um, you guys can flip it around. Um, you guys can pick origin points and all that stuff. Uh, if you guys need to add some, um, you know, add some delta values in there, uh, you can definitely add those in there. So try to stay with center of revolution as much as possible. Um, obviously each circumstance, uh, you know, requires different things, but like I said, since we're working on a round part, let's go center of revolution. So I know that everything is gonna be revolved around that coordinate system based off of the cylinder there. <clears throat> yeah, one thing to note too is that you are selecting that based off of the cylindrical face. Um, we see a lot of guys that are using that contour of the cylinder and that'll throw up an error if you try to choose your coordinate system that way. Yeah. So yeah. you definitely want to click on the face geometry as opposed to the line geometry. Yep, yeah, great point, thanks Greg. Um, now your target. So when you come in here to do your target, uh, you have two options. You can do an envelope or a section. Um, I'm going to kind of get into the more of the section as we get into the mill turn side of things. Um, for the most part, you guys can use envelope. Um, I'll get, like I said, when, once we start the mill turn, I'm going to dive deeper into this. But for all of what we're going to actually be doing going forward with the turning side of things, we're just going to stay on the envelope. Um, what that is doing is it's creating a, if I click on the model here, um, it's going to create a, it's going to take that part and like as if you created it in SOLIDWORKS and just do a 2D sketch on there as a revolution. So as you, if you were to revolve that sketch, I'll just build it real quick and I'll show you. So now you can see we have a wireframe. It's a little tough to see depending on the color of your part here, but you can kind of see we got our wireframe going all the way around our part right here. So I just went through and found all the the edges and drew a, a basically a 2D sketch for you guys. Um, you're going to use that quite often with picking your geometry. Um, so it's something that just has to be there for the turning and uh, it's kind of nice for picking. If you guys don't want to see it there, um, as we kind of get going through here, you can actually do select face versus wireframe. Um, you guys can hide this sketch if you'd like. Now, I like to do get my target um, selected first and then go to your stock as the last thing. So if we can go to our stock here, got one extra option in here than what you guys have been used to seeing with the milling side of things. So, um, so we got our cylinder in here, um, which is, if I click on here, it's just gonna throw a basic cylinder on there and I got my values way too high. So let me just zero these out. And if I wanted to, I'm right up to size right now. And then, let's see, that is a one inch hole. So what I can do is put a one inch hole in there and you can see it will draw up my geometry. Um, that's one way of going about things. Another way of going about it is, I think we've talked about this in the past with doing stock, but you guys can actually add in a stock. Um, and I'll do that real quick, just so I can kind of show you guys. So at this point, I can just draw in my stock. So if I go to my assembly tab right here, do insert new part, that little checkbox is asking what plane do I want to work on? So I'll work on that one. And what I'm gonna do is just do a convert entities on that face. And didn't get my line here. And now I can just do a features extrude. And we can say, 
offset from surface. And we can just add in additional, looks like we got 10 thou in there. Um, I do have to reverse my offset so it goes out. And that's another way of doing um, your stock. So I can come in here now and change my transparency and I can kind of see what my stock is representing um, as a cylinder too. So if I go back into my cam part and grab my stock, I can actually pick that 3D model. Now, when we go to pick our stock, it's gonna do the same thing as what it did for the target. It's gonna grab and make a uh, simple 2D sketch as it was uh, revolved. So it's building that envelope. So now you can see we have our stock wireframe right here and we have our target wireframe right here. So that's kind of basic setup of um, adding in your stuff. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately I have my, my settings turned off for this one, but what would also come up is your fixtures. So we can do a defined fixture. And this is something that we want to have on there just so we can kind of see what's going on there. And you guys can just click on fixtures, define, pick on, you know, how do you want it to clamp on there? Do you guys want to clamp on the outside like that? Do you want to clamp, you know, that way? You guys can come in here and change the dimensions of, it, of the clamping, um, or the, the clamping diameter, sorry, and the, uh, the Z shift. Um, and then you guys can change up your heights. So if your jaw width, jaw height, um, step width, all that stuff for you, for you here. So now, once we hit the green check mark on there, um, we pretty much told it what kind of jaws that we're using here. So next thing we wanna do is right click on our operations and add a machine setup. And this is just letting us know that we're using Mac one, uh, position one. I wanna use a clamping fixture and then where my X, Y, and Z are. So now we can start um, doing our turning project. Any questions so far? Okay. No, we got a pretty quiet crowd tonight. <laughs> okay, so like I said, tonight's gonna be a little bit shorter um, just because there's not a whole lot in facing, but um, try to gather everything that I'm gonna to get for right here. Um, so let's see, I have a, what is this, throw a screenshot, okay. Um, so for picking your geometry, you have the choice of doing wireframe or solid. Uh, I'll show you solid first. Solid is gonna be more meant for, not really facing, um, it's gonna be more meant for turning. Um, I do have uh, one spot that showed a good picture of it. Let me just see if I can find it real quick here. No, we don't want to restart now. So when you do the, uh, the model or the solid option right here, what you guys can do is do a start and an end. So let's say if you guys want to grab your model, um, you can do a start and end and do it that way and it's gonna pick up the chain automatically for you. Um, I would say just personally myself, I use the wireframe 99% of the time. Um, and even if you have a bunch of, you know, upper or, uh, you know, ups and downs in there, um, I like to do what's called up to entity in there. And I'll show you that once we get into the turning next, or not next week, the week after, um, how to do that. But um, you guys can do the model. I said it just kind of simplifies it a little bit uh, for you. Uh, just personally myself, after I know Ronnie and Greg and a lot of you, George, all the guys that you have been in here for my night classes for the last year and a half, I, I like, I'm a little anal, so I like to pick my stuff manually. Um, but uh, that's just another way of picking it. So for this particular one right here, if we did solid, and grab that, that, oop, let me, uh, and yeah, see, it's just not quite set up for doing facing. Um, 
because it's it, the the arrow direction is going the wrong way and it wants to chain everything right now. Um, I only want to just work on this face and this face and clear off all the way up to the top. Um, so the best route to go with that is going to be your wireframe. So what I'm going to do here is we have a couple different ways of grabbing this geometry. We can just do a line down, and, and if we just hit the green check box right there, and now if we go to our modified geometry, we have what's called auto extend to stock. So I can auto extend it down, and it knows the the stock parameters. Um, one other thing you can kind of see in here is my stock is highlighted in green. So it's this this green uh, line is always updating for you guys as you get further down in the operation as you start machining away material. Um, so that green line will constantly be updating for you. Now, if you guys want, if you guys want to add an extension on there, you know we can put an extension on there and um, extend it out farther. Um, you know, a lot lot of different options in here. You guys can do a put through on there if you guys want it off to the right. Um, up, down, a couple different options here for you guys. It's going to be defaulted um, to what I would assume would be the proper one. Um, but like I said, if you guys need to add more in there, you definitely can. Um, even if you guys wanted to add an angle in there. Um, so if we just did a 0.1 at 90 degrees, um, it's going to kind of go down and kind of through my part. Or if we just did... I wonder if we can do a 90 or negative 90. Yep, so we can do actually a negative 90 in there also. So a couple different options in there for you guys chaining. Now, another way you can go about chaining this is we can grab our, our chain right there. Um, if we want, we can go down to our point to point and we can just go to the end point, kind of like what we've done in Million Forever and hit the green check mark there and just do our auto extend for modified geometry also. So turn on my auto extend. You can see it's going to cover the entire area or the entire face that I need to cover right here. Okay, so that's the geometry, picking the geometry. Pretty simple, easy. And like I said, the turning um, after going teaching you guys uh, HSS and five axis for the last uh, couple months. It's kind of nice to go to something nice and simple. <laughs> okay, so creating a tool. Um, I think what we're actually going to do is uh, create a a shorter class just on all the tools in here. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here with the composite tools um, or just the solid tools. Um, so I'm not going to touch too much in here, but to kind of give you a good reference, your composite tools are going to be, you know, if you grab off your, your the shelf, uh, a CNMG 432, we can put those in there. If we do a solid tool, you guys are going to have to manually input all those numbers for that insert. Um, you know, I can show you right here. So you, we have all these values that we're going to have to kind of fill out right here. Um, now, if we want to add a little simpler, like I said, if we want to just do a, a CNMG, so we can just do a C and and we'll say 432, and we have our insert. So. That's a little simpler way of doing things. Um, if you guys want, you guys do have the option if you just wanted to just see the insert only. Um, you can see my insert over here. Um, if you guys aren't able to get your mouse cursor and, and see that, um, you just have to hit this little button right here. That will uh, turn that option on for you. Or if you guys aren't seeing this dialog box um, right here, uh, that's just this picture right here for you. So we can turn that on. Uh, the mounting, um, you guys can change the mounting uh, inside here, or what you guys can also do is you have the mounting option in here. So um, obviously I do not want my tool to be mounted that way. I'm gonna be kind of coming from down here. And if I turn on my tool, you can see 
this is exactly what I want to be doing, cutting straight down, working down through that part. So a couple different mounting options right there. Um, we got, if you wanted to put it at an angle, if it's sitting at an angle in your machine, um, you got your spin direction right here. Uh, tool data, I'm going to cover this and another one right here just because um, it kind of to go with the uh, the velocity, the feet per minute right here. So as uh, that tool gets closer and smaller in diameter, your spindle will actually automatically speed up for you. Um, but like I said, I wanna kind of cover this one in a just a different video, just because there's a lot going on in here. And I really wanna go through it with a fine tooth comb for you guys and uh, telling you what everything does. And so I'm like, we'll, we'll do that as a separate video, just as a 10, 15 minute video versus a, a whole night class on it. So, um, you guys can set up uh, a feed points. Uh, you got your origin position right here. So if you guys want to, um, a lot of times these will be fully lit up depending on what insert you're using. So um, since we're using the CNMG right here, but if you guys are using like a grooving, you guys can pick the center um, or the right side. Um, it's always going to kind of be de uh, defaulted to the left side for you. And then of course you got your coolant options. Um, and then tool change options as well. Levels, something that hardly ever touched, but it is there. Um, levels is basically how far you want to go up and around the part when it's moving around. Um, so it's gonna be a default value in there for you, and this can be changed uh, for a default value. Um, or if you guys want, you guys can add a custom distance in there of you know, let's say you wanted 100 thou for your X distance and maybe 50 thou for your Z, um, you guys can add that in there for you. Okay, technology, where all the good stuff is. How are you machining this right now? Do you wanna machine the front or are you doing a facing off the backside? Well, we're doing kind of the front side right now. So that's the one we're on to pick. Um, your working area. Think of, right now it's set just to look at, at the stock excuse me, of what we got going on right here. Uh, think of this as for the milling guys in here as a clear offset. So if you guys needed a clear offset, um, you know how we pick it in the technology section of the milling down here, uh, pretty much the same thing. So if we add, you know, 100 thou on there, um, it's gonna add that much farther out for you. So you can kind of see in the picture down here, um, it's just kind of offsetting that geometry out that much further for you guys, so. Direction, one way um, or zigzag, uh, you guys have that option. Uh, we'll leave it at one way right now. Um, this one's really not gonna take into effect um, so much with the, uh, let me uh, get my little question mark here so I can show you the screenshot. Not gonna take so much effect with uh, the facing. Um, it's gonna be more when we get into the turning. But here's a, a great example of kind of what the difference between stairs and smooth is. Um, so we're, uh, you know, like I said, more for turning, not really applied for this, but um, you guys do have the option there. Um, if you guys wanna do it as stairs, it's gonna do a staircase working its way up versus if we did smooth, it's gonna keep it nice and smooth through the entire cut for you guys, so. Um, you guys can add a additional, like a fine tune, uh, almost like a finish pass right here that you can fine tune it. So as it's getting up to that face, um, we can set a distance in there, um, you know, how many times you want it to cut in there. So you can kind of fine tune it so you can really hog it out real hard over here. Um, then as it's getting up to the face, we can do some additional steps in there for you. Uh, offset. Basically, how much do you want to take in the roughing cut? Or how much, sorry, how much do we want to leave over for the finishing cutter uh, tool path? So right now, um, you guys can do Z or absolute Z right here. Um, right now, we're leaving 8 thou to do a finish pass. Um, right now, we don't have a finish turned on. Um, your retract uh, or retreat distance, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Um, using cycles. Um, if you guys, if your machine does have cycles, um, this will activate with the cycles um, by just hitting that checkbox to pull up the facing cycle. Um, now, cycles have kind of been a little bit of a touchy subject 
just as uh, kind of for post-processing. Um, we do support the cycles for facing and, oh, dang, I shut, shut it down. I, I, I got it from the big boss man today. Give me one second here, I'll look. Hey, Kevin, real yep. quick too. Um, under the rough type, you have stairs and smooth. Yep. Uh, was there an option in there for ramping? Uh, nope. We have a question about that. No, nope, not on this one. So this is one way or so um, under a rough type. There you go. Yeah, uh, just smooth so, and stairs. Yeah, the ramping is going to be just under general turning, which is going to be gone over in what were you saying? Two weeks. Uh, yep. Yep, we'll be going over that one in two weeks. All right. So, yeah, great question. Um, so we do support cycles, and it's going to be in the facing and the turning side of things. Um, there's been some other cycles that have been suggested, and um, it's kind of hit or miss depending on the on the machine that you guys are using. But if you guys have that option, um, you guys can turn that on right there. Uh, and then finish. You know, fin do you want to finish it up to size, or do you want to use a different tool to come back and finish it? And then if you guys want to use compensation, um, you have that option right there as well. Not much in here. Like I said, pretty simple, easy. Um, now, in the link, how do you want it to uh, engage into the material and disengage from the material? So you have your approach point. So do you want to come from the top right safety corner? Um, you can do top left. You can do a couple different options in here for you guys on how do you guys want to uh, come into that material. Um, you guys can do a direct, so it comes from the tool change and just does a nice angle over and then starts cutting. Um, this one, I find out that it kind of tightens up the butt cheeks a little bit because it kind of comes in there at an angle. Um, so if you guys are worried about that, then just keep it at the, uh, you know, the upper right safety corner right here. Um, same thing with your retract. You have a different option for that one. Um, lead in, lead out. Your typical, you got your normal. Um, with your extension on there, on your length, um, you can do an arc. Oops. So you can kind of swoop in and arc into the material kind of coming down in. Um, or we can do a tangent, just coming in over. So you got your extension, um, how long you want it, and then you can actually put an angle in there too if you want. So leave that at none, save and calculate. And we have our tool path. So let's just do a simulation. Now, with milling, um, my my two go-to ones that are that I always use are going to be um, I can't think HostCAD and Solid Verify. Uh, when it comes to turning, uh, my preferred one is going to be the turning option right here. Um, the thing I like about this is it's going to show you um, your stock, your target. Um, if I just do a single step, you can see my target is in the orange. Um, my stock is in the blue right here. Um, so it really sh gives you a good aspect of kind of what's going on. You can kind of see the material working around. And the nice thing too is you can really zoom in on this, and just click and drag it around and s see that we're we're going past our radius here. Um, so I'm able to clean up the material there. Um, so, like I said, it's just personal preference. Um, the other one that you can use quite often is going to be the Solid Verify. Um, this one I don't use as often. Like I said, the turning was kind of the, the go-to one there, but we can kind of see what's going on in the solid verify of things. And then if we want, play this right here, we can get our, uh, what I call our sanity check and make sure we're up to size. So we are showing green there. Um, we're still showing blue um, up here in that groove, which we'll do for a different day here. Um, but good way to do a sanity check. And then you guys can see your, your jaws that you're turning in there. And it looks like I'm running a massive part with these tiny little jaws, but <laughs> I just didn't adjust the size for those. Now, one other way, um, and kind of skipping ahead just a, a hair a little bit, but um, if you guys want, what you guys can also do to face off your part is do a turning strategy. And I'm not gonna get into the details of turning today because we're gonna get in that in two weeks, but um, we can grab that same geometry, what we've done before, and we'll just do our modify auto extend. Oh, well now you can see, so here, let me get a nice view here. So you can see my green line is my stock and my 
or where my finished stock, where I left off with that previous op, uh, operation. Um, so that, like I said, uh, I was telling you before, that green line is constantly updating for you guys, letting you know, know where your material is. So this is another way of kind of going about it. Let's grab a tool real quick. And you'll notice you get a lot more options in here. So you guys can do a rough, um, in here you can get the ramping, um, like we were showing in that picture and kind of talking about before. Um, so don't, it, it's just like using face mill for the milling side of things. Um, you guys can use face mill, but you guys will notice that you guys will get a lot more control if you use like a pocket operation or a profile operation uh, versus the face mill. Um, there's a lot more options in here for you guys. So like I said, you can do your steps, uh, your retreat distance one way. Um, you have your, your distance in here of how much you want to offset for your roughing. Um, we can do a semi-finish um, with a different uh, strategy and like I said I'm not going to get into these uh, today but uh, we'll get into those next week but you'll see I have a lot more options in uh, turning than I do let me just save and calculate this yeah it's not going to let me um, you have a lot more options versus in here where you just kind of got just one kind of field area so if you guys need the options the, um, just go switch over to turning versus just standard facing just because it's a very simplified operation for you guys to hurry up and get the job done. But if you need to get down to the nitty gritty, uh, definitely um, do a turning versus a facing. So that is everything that I can think of offhand. Um, do we have any questions or do I think I missed anything, Greg, with the facing? Um, I'm not seeing anything um, coming through our question queue. Um, maybe uh, we can expand on geometry a little bit and using the solid method for defining the geometry. Sure. So I think do... uh, one of the things that we uh, glossed over a little bit is the use of the clockwise and counterclockwise when selecting those faces. Start, oh, come on, start, end. So, okay. So right now it's going to travel clockwise from your start face to your end face, and that's going to drive that tool path direction. Whereas if you had wanted it to go all the way around the part, you'd select counterclockwise, and it would travel in the opposite direction until it got to that secondary face. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, yep, yep. But that's uh, one that's tripped me up quite a bit in the past because it selects everything except for what I want. And I yep. have to go back and uh, toggle that button and select again. Yeah, and like it makes selecting your geometry very easy. And like I said, we have a very simplified part right here. But um, if you guys are going through and, you know, you know, yeah, um, you know a bunch of valleys and um, – highs and lows and just grabbing all these little line segments that does definitely help out um and then if we actually let me just try i think it's going to give us an error yeah just because it's telling me it can't be uh fit in there um so it's uh I'm trying to think if we can actually skip over that no i don't see any options so we can skip over that so just in, like I said, with the facing, the the solid is definitely meant more for turning versus uh, face milling or facing. Sorry. So. Yeah. Another thing that's good to realize is that when you're selecting geometry based off of the solid, um, you would have a lot greater associativity to your model if you're doing an entire family of parts. Um, that uses similar geometry. Yeah, that is a good I know point. we'll probably cover this in uh, greater detail in the turning operation, but while we're on geometry selection, that is something that uh, is probably good to keep in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Ronnie, would it work if you picked the OD 90? Uh, let me check. No, I'm guessing no, Ronnie, just because I, I'm guessing... 
Oops. Do new. Oh, if maybe like this and this and the famous uh forgot to do clockwise. So it will do that, Ronnie, but it's going to, if you do the OD uh, in the ID, it's going to pretty much start from the furthest point on that surface over. Um, so if you wanted to kind of end it, kind of think of it, uh, see, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. When you grab a uh, the face of it, it's going to go to the furthest out face. So if we grabbed this face right here, it's going to start up here. Or if we grab this face over here, it's going to start to the furthest point. Um, same thing with the inside here. It's going to want to go over, down, and then all the way through for you. So kind of think of it as your start and end of with the furthest point in there, I guess you'd say. I think that, is, is that kind of what you're getting at there, Ronnie? I was thinking morph between curves. Mm. Yeah, morph between surfaces. Um, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's just like morph between surfaces. Um, like I said, it's just taking that very far, the furthest endpoint possible. Um, so you really don't. Let me just try something real quick. If I go, if I click more down on the bottom side here, and more on the top side. No, I was thinking maybe it depends on kind of where you select it on that face, but it's just going to grab the furthest uh, point that's on that face for you. Perfect. Any other questions, guys? Was it really a boring class because we're just talking facing? <laughs> I was I was a little worried uh, that it was going to be a little dull tonight, but uh, we'll get into, um, like I said, a much better, uh, some turning parts coming up, and there's just not a whole lot inside facing, um, but we have a, had a lot of guys uh, inquire about uh, wanting to know everything inside here, so um, like I said, I'm going to actually have uh, either Mark or myself go through a, a full, you know, how-to video we've kind of we touched a little bit on it in one of the the shorter videos of setting up a tool library for turning but um there's a lot in here as to the turning um i didn't i forgot to even show you guys the shank of what we're using here but there's a lot of stuff in here um that gets a little confusing especially when we get over to the uh the solid holders of you know what values kind of go in there and getting that that exact shape that you're looking for um, and then we'll actually cover uh, the uh, custom tools in there too, and shape tools. So, and then bringing in, um, we do have a couple uh, STL videos. So if you guys have STL tooling um, that you guys want to bring in, we do have some videos on the uh, on the site for that. So, yeah, nice of you to uh, show a little love to the turning guys after. How long has it been? A year and a yeah, half in uh, yeah, milling yeah. tutorials? Yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah, it's only, we've only been doing this for, what, a, a year and a half, and we're finally getting over to the turning side. So, <laughs> um, But, yeah, we'll be, we'll be getting through. Like I said, we're uh, – <clears throat> so this we covered facing today. Um, next week, I have to actually bring my mom to the airport, so I won't be around to do the uh, turning for you guys. But we're going to kind of go through this. The drilling is going to be a little bit uh, – on the drier side too um, but then we're getting the threading and some grooving there's some pretty cool stuff you can do on here with grooving angle grooving cut off um, manual turning is a uh, is going to be another little dry one but you'll notice that when i go to pick my geometry let's see do you want to say no if i come in here and add a new uh turning operation and if I go to grab my geometry, let's say I just want to take one additional pass with a different cutter come, coming down here. Just want to manually do it. 
that's where the manual kind of comes into factor or if you're just trying to push a tool just in a certain direction um, there's been quite a few cases that come through that you just want to get that tool in that one spot and that's it and that's basically kind of what um, uh, the manual turning is um, tricoidal turning is ion machining uh, for turning as basically what's going on there um, I'm going to cover the balance roughing once we get into uh, the mill turn side of things and then uh, the uh, tilted turning here so um, the balance roughing for those guys are kind of unsure is if you guys were running a upper turret and a lower turret um, you can actually be roughing uh, with the top turret and finishing with the lower turret um, all at the exact same time so that's going to be your balanced uh, turning that's what you call it so yeah and if you guys have parts that um, Ben was saying he, he might have a part for me. So yeah, definitely. If you guys have parts that you guys want to see it done on, absolutely send those over to me in email um, and uh, we'll throw them on there. And uh, like I said, we did a couple of customer files already. As um, long as we have permission to show the entire world uh, your part, we're, uh, if you're okay with that, we'll definitely show it for you. So, um, Ben, yep, he was both roughing and turning on. Yep, so yep, you'll be able to do a balanced, um, so it's kind of going side by side. And I guess if, I, if you guys want here, I can show you, oops. Go here, solid cam. And I can't remember where they have it stuffed at. We do have a couple of videos. Maybe if I click on the video section. This is more eye machining than anything here. Um, well, when we get to that point, I'll show you a video. It's, it's pretty neat how it does it, um, using the upper turret and lower turret at the same time. But um, yeah. All that great stuff looking forward to so definitely if you guys uh, have parts send them over or any suggestions um, send them over and uh, we'll take those into factor but uh, that about wraps it up for every or for what I have tonight but um, do we have uh, any other questions that have come through come on. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, thanks for all the great comments. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, you guys keep on these videos, we'll keep making them for you. Um, like I said, this one is being recorded. So if you guys do have questions or if you guys do want this uh, pretty simplified part here of what I've done, um, be happy to send it over to you guys. Um, and if, just like I said, just shoot me an email if you need that part and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, like I said, next week we're not having a class, but the week after we'll get into turning and threading and and all this good stuff going forward. So look forward to seeing you guys in two weeks, unfortunately. Um, but it, like I said, anything comes up along the way, let us know. And um, yeah, thanks again for attending the night class tonight. <laughs> anything else, Greg, that you can think of? No, no, I think that uh, pretty well sums it up. Perfect. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. And thanks again for uh, attending the night class. See you guys.